Hello everyone, this is Brian Labuanan and welcome to our first video of our Obligations and Contracts series. Today we're going to talk about what is an obligation. So what is an obligation? According to Article 1156 of the Civil Code, an obligation is a juridical necessity to give, to do, or not to do. We have three elements. First is giving which means that you have to give something to another and the thing may involve a tangible thing such as a car or any product and it may also involve an intangible thing such as copyrights, trademark, and etc. And the second element is the doing part which means that one must render some service for the benefit of another. So it may involve dancing, singing, or professional work such as accounting and uh, legal services for example now you may think that giving is also doing because when you give it is also doing something which is giving but what the law is contemplating about is that the subject matter of doing something is rendering some service and the subject matter of giving is the thing that is to be delivered so it's specifically for things so that is the distinction between the two a third element is not doing something which simply means that you only have to refrain from doing a certain act for example you're in a job and you're hired so part of your contract is not to get employed in another company so that's an example of not doing these three elements have names so the giving part is called the real obligation subject matter again is the thing to be delivered and we have the doing and not doing they are called personal obligation for doing something it is called positive personal obligations subject matter being the service to be rendered and for not doing something it is called negative personal obligations the subject matter is the not doing a certain act now going back to the definition of an obligation it is also called a juridical necessity which only means that if there is non-performance or non-fulfillment the creditor or the party who is entitled to be benefited of the obligation can file a case in court against the debtor so if you have obligations then be careful be careful be careful now that we understand the definition of an obligation we need also to understand the difference of civil obligations and natural obligations the distinction between these two types of obligations is found in Article 1423 of the Civil Code. Obligations are civil or natural. Civil obligations give a right of action to compel their performance. Natural obligations, not being based on positive law, but on equity and natural law, do not grant a right of action to enforce their performance. But after voluntary fulfillment by the obliger, they authorize the retention of what has been delivered or rendered by reason thereof. So for civil obligations, these are the obligations that we're talking about. These are the obligations where the creditor is entitled to seek relief from the courts in case of non-performance. This is the obligation where the aggrieved party can sue the other party in court in case of non-fulfillment. And for natural obligations, this is a different type of obligation because this is not based on positive law but on equity and natural law. These do not grant the right of action to compel or ask for relief from the courts in case of non-fulfillment. But after or in case there is voluntary performance, the debtor cannot ask for the return of what has been delivered or the value of the service that he has rendered. The debtor cannot say that I'm not legally obliged because I don't have a civil obligation to you but in case there's voluntary performance even though the obligation is not legally binding for the sake of equity and fairness the law entitles the creditor to retain what has been given you can find the entire set of provisions for natural obligations in article 1423 to 1430 of the civil code but to illustrate let us take a look at article 1424 when a right to sue upon a civil obligation has lapsed by extinctive prescription, the obliger who voluntarily performs the contract cannot recover what he has delivered or the value of the service he has rendered. So let's take an example. In a written contract, person A owes person B 10,000 pesos. Under the law, written contracts prescribes after 10 years, meaning these contracts cannot be enforced after the lapse of 10 years. 
So it now becomes a natural obligation after that period rather than a civil obligation. In this example, in case the 10-year period has already lapsed, then person B cannot enforce the performance of A because his obligation has already prescribed. In this case, person B cannot compel A to pay him 10,000 pesos. But in case person A pays B after the 10-year period, B can retain the 10,000 pesos. Person A cannot ask back the 10,000 pesos in case he realizes that the obligation has already prescribed. Because under the law of natural obligations, in case there is voluntary fulfillment by the debtor, the creditor can retain what he has received. In this case, person B can retain the 10,000 pesos. This is the effect of natural obligations. Because even though under the law, A is not obliged to pay the 10,000, he still has the moral duty to pay B his debt. So this is the distinction between civil obligations and natural obligations. So for civil obligations, in case of non-fulfillment by the debtor, the creditor may seek relief from the courts for fulfillment of the obligation. But in natural obligations, the creditor has no right to compel the debtor or ask relief from the courts. But in case of fulfillment by the debtor, then the creditor is entitled to retain the value given to him by the debtor. So that's it. I hope I answered the question of what is an obligation. In this video, we discussed the three elements, giving, doing, and not doing, and why an obligation is a juridical necessity. Be careful. And lastly, we discussed the difference between civil and natural obligations. So that's it for this video, and I hope you subscribe to our channel because in our next episode, we're going to discuss the essential requisites of an obligation. So see you there.